Hi there, let's deal with uh, our next section. Uh, remember before I talked about how we were going to look at one last plant part or organ later on and that's today. We're going to look at how flowers, seeds and pollination help in plant reproduction. There are actually two types of reproduction. One is you have two different individual plants and those individual plants will produce offspring in the form of seeds. However, the other type of reproduction that's involved is where you just have one individual. Uh, so we'll get into the other type of reproduction later on. Um, sometimes plants that have flowers have a different name and we call them angiosperms. There are also plants that don't produce flowers but produce seeds and we call those gymnosperms. These are cone producing plants. Uh, so let's look at the parts to a flower and focus in first on the angiosperms. There are female parts to the, to the flower Female parts of the flower are called the pistil. And the pistil consists of uh, the top part, which is the stigma, and the long stalk in the middle, the style, then the ovary, and inside the ovary, you have an ovule which makes eggs. Uh, the male parts to the flower are twofold. The anther, which contain pollen grains, which are, I guess, the flower sperm, and the filament, which is the stalk that holds it up. You also have other parts, the sepal, which helps protect and hold the petals, the receptacle, and then, of course, the petals, which can be very colorful to help attract insects or pollinators. Here it is again. You can see in purple here the female parts, the stigma, the style, the ovary with the ovules and then eggs inside. So the gray parts, the ovules. Then the male parts are the anther, which contain the pollen, and the filament. So let's talk again. Here are the sepals, protect the flower. The petals are colorful to attract insects. The stamen produce male pollen. The style is where pollen too grows down. And let's talk about pollination. Pollination involves the transfer of pollen, that's the male, from the anther to the stigma. If it's in the same flower, it's called self-pollination, which isn't good because then the baby, which is the seed, will look too similar and have too many similar characteristics to the parent. However, if it, thanks to the help of insects like bees or other insects, if pollen is spread to another flower, it's called cross-pollination. And plants are pollinated usually by insects or even wind. So pollen is sticky and it sticks to insect bodies. Uh, so wind pollinated plants usually have lots of adaptations to help this happen. Once fertilization occurs, the fertilized egg, which is now called the zygote, becomes a seed and the ovary turns into the fruit. The petals die and they fall off and the plant seeds are inside the fruit. Strawberries, believe it or not, tomatoes, even though we call them vegetables, are actually fruits. So what are fruits like? They're soft and fleshy or they can be hard and dry. So here are some examples of two types of fruits that are soft and fleshy and some that are hard and dry. Again, 
unfortunately, society has sort of um, twisted the meaning of fruit. Lots of a peanut is actually a fruit, a hazelnut, etc. And then once the seed is made, <coughs> it should be dispersed or spread away from the plant. Plants can't move, so they need ways of spreading their seeds to prevent overcrowding and fighting for the same water and the same soil, etc. Same light. So they have to spread their seeds. How do they spread their seeds? Through wind, like these seeds, they look like helicopter blades, or by animals. So animals <coughs> eat the fruit, and then they walk somewhere else, and then of course they poop it out. Or other ways, animals external by sticking to the fur. Let's look at the video clip on flowers. Sign here. Okie doke. Huh. Dear Moby, last year I planted a couple of flowers in my backyard, and this year there are dozens. I didn't plant any more, so what happened? From Merrill. Hey, why is this only addressed to you? All those new flowers that popped up grew from seeds that came out of the original few. There's a whole lot that goes on before you even get a seed. Flowers reproduce by pollination and then fertilization. I guess it's time for that little talk about the birds and the bees. <laughs> if, if you've ever sniffed a flower and sneezed, you've probably got some pollen in your nose. In order for a new seed to form, pollen from the stamen of one flower must be carried to the pistil of another flower. For trees and grass, the wind acts as a pollinator, blowing the pollen to other plants far and wide. Many flowers are pollinated by insects. Flowering plants have evolved colors, smells, shapes, and nectar to attract unwitting pollinators to their reproductive parts. The most famous pollinator is the honeybee. A honeybee lands on a flower to gather nectar. It brushes against the anthers and gets a dusting of pollen. The nectar is so tasty to bees that they don't stop with just one flower. On the next flower, the honeybee leaves some of the pollen behind, and a pollen grain is collected by the pistil. The grain of pollen grows a thin tube that travels down the pistil until it meets an ovule. Fertilization happens when the male pollen and female ovule combine. The fertilized ovule eventually grows into a seed, which can become a new plant. Not all flowers are pollinated by bees. Some flowers are pollinated by other insects, hummingbirds, bats, or even water. Flowering plants have special relationships with the animals that pollinate them. It works out for both of them. The plant gets pollinated and the bee gets food. Obi? Where are you? <laughs>